Hello everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. Today we are going to do a little sketch um, with our skulls. I had a couple of requests uh, for how to draw skulls and uh, I thought we'd draw the one that I've done before. This is uh, available on my Etsy shop. Um, part of the Halloween collection. So I thought we'd draw him today as a kind of a reference uh, so you can see what it is we're going to draw and see if you want to draw along with me. Grab a pen, pencil, and some paper. So uh, this is a photocopy of the original. Um, my original is very big. It's like 20 by 23, I believe. Uh, I really had a lot of fun drawing these, so I thought we could draw one together. So I'm kind of limited on paper right now. I only have a, a scrap piece of watercolor paper. So it, it's going to have a bit of a different texture, but it's still totally doable. And uh, we can always watercolor it later if we want to. But uh, let's let's get started. So I'm going to use a uh, just an HB pencil, kind of get my bearings here, and then I'll go to pen. So I like to start with the nose. It kind of is the center feature here. Uh, and it helps kind of gives me an idea of where I want to place things. So I'm going to, it's going to be kind of hard to explain the shapes. Um, I can draw a little darker for you so you can see. It's dark outside so I had to put an extra light on and unfortunately it's casting a bit of a shadow. I wonder if I should turn it off. But I'm going to draw a little dark so you can hopefully see it. Maybe drop you down a little lower too. Let's see if I can do that. This setup's a little wonky. There we go. Okay, so that's the inside of his nose. And I'm just kind of playing with some, some fun shape here. Because remember, this is all bone. So this is hollow in here. Uh, then I want to give his eyes, so I kind of give myself an idea of where his eyes will start and the shape of the cavity of the eye. So, I mean, you can make your eyes any shape you want. You can make him super creepy, you can make him super happy, kind of like a sugar skull. You can do pretty much anything you want with your little skull guy. Uh, I think I'm going to shorten him a little on this side. So I like to kind of build up the eyes here. Kind of get them as symmetrical as I can. They don't have to be perfect. Then I like to do the teeth. So if I draw a line down, I know that this is the center of his teeth. And I like to have fun with the teeth. I like them all gnarly and fun looking and kind of edgy and scary because teeth don't look very nice without gums <laughs> they've got a really creepy creepy kind of look to them and so I just kind of draw them almost like a, a frowny face and as they move away they get smaller and tucked in behind each other and a little wider for the molars Again, don't have to be perfect. The creepier, the better. Then I'm going to do his bottom teeth here. And I like to give them kind of a very uneven look. Kind of broken. I'm just pulling my teeth out here. Pulling my teeth out. Drawing my teeth. I'm not literally pulling my teeth. And again, just a little bit wider for the molars. And then down here gets a little bit of a curve because this is gonna be the bottom of the jaw. But before I get into that, I wanna, I wanna frame the outside of his jaw. So he gets a little bit of a bone structure coming down here. So this is his cheekbone, which goes into his jaw here. And another line kind of indicates the roof of his mouth. And then this one connects back here now. And then his jawbone coming down. So we kind of repeat that on the other side. Again, it doesn't have to match. It's, uh, it's a rough 
half rotten old skeleton bones here so we don't we don't want perfection we want creepy again his lower jaw here and then into his chin and we'll play with some details some more details once we once we get going on the coloring part because we're going to use pen to scribble in some fun parts here so he's got a lower jaw there we go and then i like to put a hat on him hat's fun so let's give him a hat you can give him a cowboy hat a winter toque you can do whatever you want i'm just going to do the hat i had before maybe decorate it a little different so the oval top because we can see just a little bit of the top of the hat we want to make sure it fits his head so if we were to draw his head this hat's far too big so i'm going to narrow it in a bit more and maybe shorten it so things you want to pay attention to while you're sketching proportion wise you know he doesn't have a big head of hair and he doesn't have um tissue and skin and brain so his head is significantly smaller than it once was so his hat will be smaller and I just keep sketching it out till I get something I like and then of course the top of the hat here and then the brim okay and then we're gonna do a little concave here and then his back of his skull here Kind of fun and then you can give him a collar if you want so in this case i'm going to give him a collar i thought it'd be kind of fun to maybe add a bow tie this time so just something very small again you can add whatever you want put gold chains around them there's no right or wrong here it's just your imagination so there we go we've drawn him in his his attire so now we can put have fun and put some details in. So I just grabbed a whack load of my pens here because some of them are going to work and some of them aren't because uh, i got to go through them and figure out what's working, what's not. So these are uh, Microns, uh, 0 0.3, I believe. They're all point, uh, point 0 0.03, I believe. Um, archival and waterproof. And then my Uniball Vision, which is also a waterproof ink. So this is an ink flow pen and this is more of a uh, felted type tip. So a little bit more control on the ink I find with these and a little less control on these. But it really, again, just depends on what you like to use. So I'm going to start sketching in my lines here. And I'm just going to have fun doodling away. And this is where you get to play with the texture of the bone and putting in shade and things like that. So underneath the brim would cast a shadow. So this would be in shadow here. And again, I'm just using a very loose kind of sketchy approach here. I'm just gonna have fun scribbling it in. So you can see the ink flows much faster on this pen than it will be with the Micron, which I think I'm gonna to switch to because this is watercolor paper and it's absorbing this black pen pretty fast. And I wanna stay a little bit more in control of my ink. Not that one. Let's try this one. So I want my ink to flow a little bit slower so I have a little more control of where I'm putting my shading. So you can see it's a little bit more dry effect with this pen especially on the watercolor paper because watercolor paper is absorbent so I'm going to just shape out his eyes a bit and his nose so I want to I want to kind of make his nose a little bit more interesting by making it a little bit more squiggly here So this is where I'd go back to this pen now and fill it in faster. Just 
filling it in. Now when I draw by myself, obviously I draw much slower, take my time, but for videos I like to speed it up a little bit because it's kind of boring watching somebody just color something in. <laughs> and some of you really like watching me color things in, so there you go, you never know. I'm going to give it a little bit of a, a lip on the bone here, kind of just giving myself some texture. That bone is old, it's eaten, it's been uh, exposed to the elements, it's got dirt in it, it's been sitting around for a while. It's been, it's been gone a long time, this guy. And a little bone structure. So even though we're drawing on a two-dimensional surface, we still want to make sure we give it some three-dimensional feel. So this anchor here between the eye sockets as part of the bone is curved and then his eyes are hollow but in the back of his eye you'd still see a bit of the cranial cavity back here for example so we can give a little bit of that indication before we color it in so you're looking in through to his brain or where his brain once was. So you gotta kinda think in three-dimensional terms, which can be challenging. So references are always good. You know, maybe you have one of those uh, Halloween skulls in front of you that you can use. I hope you don't have a real one. <laughs> Unless you're a doctor of bones of some kind. <laughs> but I'm not judging if you do. <laughs> And I'm just gonna put those in a little bit lighter and then I'm gonna go in to the darker space, which recesses further back where there's less light. And I'm gonna put some darker in there. And then I want the transition to be a bit smoother so he's not so googly eyed looking. So the light is coming towards the bottom up there, but it's a little bit lighter than what's in here kind of creating that illusion that there's light bouncing off the back of part of his skull here. So we'll darken up the spot where the light won't get to, which is way back there in his head. And I love drawing Halloween stuff. Um, that collection that I did, there's two on my Etsy shop because um, I did them a couple of years ago, actually, those sketches. I was just in the mood to sketch random Halloween things, and it was just so much fun because, it, you know, normally I do botanicals or uh, trees or something like that, birds, and then Halloween comes around and you get that kind of fall smell in the air, and there's just something that I love to explore that theme. And it's outside what I would draw normally most of the year, which is also makes it really fun. Okay, so there's his eyes. I play with the bone a little bit more, so maybe we'll put a little interest around his eye here. And again, it's going to curve out. So the more details you put in, the more fun he becomes. So you can see, you can ha have a lot of fun putting in these little marks that indicate texture in the bone. I'm just scribbling away. And then, you know, putting in the detail that's important. So for example, the jawline here, this is hollow back here. So again, I'll switch to the faster pen. And that would be hollow hollow hole. So this is his front jaw and this is his back jaw. So in between there, there's space that's not getting any light. And again, nothing's really even here. Like I said, it's he's pretty rough looking. I think the unevenness adds to the, the kind of creepiness of him too. 
And then the hat and the bow tie kind of soften it so he's not too creepy. So again, just playing with some bone texture here. Maybe he's got a crack in his bone so we can put an indication of a crack here. So you can just keep having fun and having fun. I'm gonna outline his teeth with my pen here and then we'll darken the space that again is not getting any light. And then we'll put texture in his teeth. Just so much fun. Even if skulls aren't your thing, it's still a fun exercise. So now I'm gonna just take my quick black pen here and just fill in the space between the teeth inside the mouth where again there would be no light. Pops the teeth forward. Any space between his teeth would go dark. Any cracks or rough edges on his teeth you want to put in with the black pen. Kind of make his teeth a little rough looking. Like he never took care of them. Well, he must not been too bad taking care of his teeth. He has them all. <laughs> None have been pulled, so that's a good sign. <laughs> so maybe they've just decayed a little over time. All right. I'll put, emphasize the jaw behind here. Also, just swoop down underneath that tooth and be darker in there. Same on this side the back jaw and the space of, so his mouth can open. Be dark. So we'll put a little texture in his teeth here. Just a little green, just to show that it's coarse. Maybe a little shading at the bottom of the gum here, where the gum once was. And then we'll do a highlight around the bone where, it, where the teeth come out. So it's a little ridge there. Get rid of that pencil mark so we can see it a bit better. There we go. Again, bone texture. Maybe he's got a dent, you know, maybe he has one of those, what are they called with the a dimple in his chin, a dimple in his bone. Play a little more with the shading of the skull, and then you can really play with the jawbone. Really give it some interesting features back there. And all I'm doing is just scribbling with my pencil, with my pen, sorry, just trying to indicate some, again, some textures, some interest, some form. I don't want to give too much shading, but I want, I want some detail and some interest in this skull. So very light, I'm moving quickly, so not a lot of ink is coming out. Just a little bit of interest in here. And then maybe he's got a crack in this part of his skull too. Just a wiggly kind of line here. You can make that, you can say there's a whole piece missing right here by darkening up that spot completely. Another piece missing down here. So you can have lots of fun with that. Maybe there's a piece missing right here. Okay, so his chin's going to come right down over that bow tie. Square that off a little bit more. And then the bow tie should really come out from underneath his chin. So I just want to make sure I've drawn his chin in and then the bow tie. I'm 
comes out from underneath because it's further back. Something fun. Use my dark pen here, my quicker absorbent pen to put some folds in that bow tie. more shadow up towards his head here. Just scribbling it in. Of course, you can really slow down and take your time and put whatever details you want in. But this is a good exercise just to loosen up and kind of get your feeling for it. How to put some texture in the bone. How to draw the skull. I was surprised how many requests I had for skulls, actually. So that was good. Like I said, I do like drawing them. Okay. All right, I think that works. A little more texture in the bottom of his chin here. All right. So let's go back to his face, put some more details in, play with the, so, uh, you would have kind of these formations of bone that goes up underneath your gums. So we'll put a little bit of that in just to indicate it on the bone structure. And we'll just shade in a little bit. I want to pop any, say he's got a little gap in between some of his teeth here. We'll darken that up a little really play with that. So if we want to like really make his teeth creepy, we can really darken underneath his gums. And those lines go curved, right? Remember this is round, it's not flat. So we don't want to go straight up. We want to curve it. And then as we move over here, they curve this way. So it creates that roundness, that form we're looking for. So we're always paying attention to form when we're sketching. And we use these little techniques of curving our lines, contouring our lines in order to achieve that illusion. And that's what my quickie sketches are usually about, is just little tricks on how to achieve that feel of form. So here's another example. So his bone is not flat. This part curves away and his cheekbone is here. So I'm not going straight up and down or back and forth. I'm curving the texture in the direction the bone is formed. And then there's a round piece here that maybe comes in and then goes back out. So I'm going to put that in there. So I bring it in and then I bring it out. And I've created that kind of ridge and the illusion that there's it's not just round here, there's some dents. So I'll show you on this side. So I'm coming up on this side here and right here it curves back in. So I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way. So it goes out and then it comes in. So this is, it's still one piece of bone, but there's some form on the side of it where it curves away. Just scribbling away. Same with this side, we'll scribble away. So maybe we'll give him a little bit of a, a little crease under his eye here, a little bone ridge. I'd like to put a little bit over on this side too. Just scribble away. Putting in so you can darken some spots, make it look like it's really deep. back up here and really darken this 
a little bit in here. Okay, so we'll leave that for a little while. We'll come back and see if we want to add more. Let's work on the the um, collar here. So this is decorative. This isn't, you know, super realistic. This is just having fun with your imagination. So you can put whatever pattern you want. I like to kind of give myself a, a fold in the fabric wherever I've made a crease. And then you can put whatever you want. I mean, you can put little, you can put little bats if you want, you know, if you want to do something like that. I like the contrast behind him to be dark. So I like to fill in the fabric dark. So you can do little white bats, you can do little brooms, you can do, in my case, I did polka dots. So maybe this time we'll do stripes. I'm going to do a black stripe by his face because I really want his his white jaw to pop forward. And then it, that would continue down here, for example. And then the next one can be white. And then the next one's black. Again, not tons of detail. I'm not, I'm not worrying too much about the form of the fabric. I maybe will curve it right at the top here but it's more about decoration, this part. So there's a fold there, so the line of the black will be distorted, so it'll be smaller because the fabric's folded and we won't see that other side of the fold. We will see a line towards the back though, so it's folded and it wraps around here and then wraps back this way. So I'll do the white and then black. So you can see this is where I really enjoy it the most is decorating. So all my sketches that are in my Halloween collection are decorations. So I've done an owl and then when I was drawing the owl, I thought, oh, he needs a costume. So I put a hat and a, a cape on him. And um, the witch, She's got a funny, uh, she's got a fun hat on and it's just, this is where I love doing the Halloween stuff because there's, there's no rules. Just have fun. Use your imagination. Things that maybe creep some people out can be, you can turn them into something fun and exciting by, uh, making them a little softer, you know, like for example, this guy. His hat and his bow tie soften him. He's not so terrifying as just a creepy skull walking around. <laughs> but then maybe you're into the creepy stuff. I think creepy can be fun too. I'm not too into the gore, but I do like, I, I mean, I'm not gonna say I don't like it. For me, it's if somebody is really good at drawing it and clever at drawing disturbing things like gore or any kind of disturbing thing if they've got the means and the talent to draw with detail i can totally appreciate the work so i would never say i don't like something because it's more about how the subject matter is rendered sometimes than the subject matter itself so like salvador dali for example his you know his dreamy like paintings they're they're weird and they're strange, but it's the way he paints them that make them so intriguing. And Goya, his stuff was dark and disturbing, but his use of light and um, his details made his paintings interesting. So yeah, there's all kinds of uh, all kinds of different artists out there. So you know, when you say you don't like skulls or you don't like creepy crawlies look past the subject matter and try and value and appreciate the skill level that's involved or their creative process. All right, so I'm just going to do a couple on this side just to give you an idea. So I want to work on the hat a little bit. So I did the bat. You're going to see a little bit of his wing coming through. That's okay. You can always white it out. 
Sometimes I draw before I think. <laughs> I think the stripes look really cool, actually. They're creating a really fun, intriguing <clears throat> pattern that really pops the rest of this drawing, in my opinion, anyways. So bear with me. I know this art's boring. You can always fast forward this part, too. So just remember to you're not always going straight you even though we're not putting tons of detail into the um, clothing here we still want to indicate some form we still want to show that it is fabric and it's wrapped around him but we're simplifying it a little bit so that white, that this fabric would wrap around here. So the white would be on the other side of this. So the black line would be much closer. Wouldn't be as spaced apart. Think about how the fabric is folded on itself in the collar here. So again, another little trick to give it a little bit more dimension, just like we did over here, much more, less wide line, a narrower line here is the word I'm looking for, narrower. And that just shows that the fabric's folded. So what do we want to do on the hat? I'm really loving the stripes. What do we want to do on the hat? I'm just gonna do one more here. So I think you get the idea. And then you can do these little sketches and frame them. And put them in your journals. They're just so much fun to draw. You know, you only draw these for so long and then you move on to say Christmas or something. Okay, so I think we get the idea with that. So what should we do with the hat? I'm really liking the stripe, so I feel like we should include the stripe in the hat somewhere. So when you're drawing the oval to the hat, am I in frame? You want to make sure that the you're not you're not going too wide because the the image that we're the angle that we're looking on. So if you draw a full circle up here, you're now way on top of the hat, which means you wouldn't see his face like this. So we only see a little bit of the top of the hat because the hat is leaning forward on his head, which is why it's close to his eyes. So you do have to pay attention to things like perspective when you're drawing things like this. You have to think how would that hat sit on his head if I can see his whole face. So if the hat was leaned more forward and we could see more of it, um, his, his face would be on an angle. It would be further back. His chin would be further away. So just little things to consider when you are drawing. So let's do, let's do a big wide brim decoration and I think that's where we'll maybe put the strap the the stripes in so let's do that so I'm gonna put some stripes in here and again you can decorate your hat any way you want so this brim sits on top of the hat on top of the felt so there would be a little bit of line coming out so you see how the line stops here if we fill it in black it doesn't really look like it's on the hat, but if we just go out just a little bit past that line, the thickness of that ribbon will stand out past the brim, and then it looks like it's wrapping around. So another little trick, just to make it feel a little bit more um, three-dimensional. So I'll just color these in. It's nice to kind of duplicate the pattern and echo it in other places. So what else do we want to do in this hat? Do we want to just go solid black? Do we want to put a pattern in it? Those are all the kinds of things you can decide as you go. Now we could have put creases in this um, fabric which could distort the lines, but we didn't draw them in, so we're just gonna go straight. So if you had creased the fabric and put curves in it so that it wasn't laying super tight and flat to the hat, again, adding more realism, more 
more form. But I didn't think of that till now, <laughs> so we're just going to go flat. <laughs> the, this piece of ribbon's tight around the hat, that's all. Again, that's part of the stuff you can decide when you're doing this, the preliminary sketch with the pencil. You can really just play with the details there and make it as realistic as you like. Do one more here. And then a little one here. Okay, so we, we've mimicked the pattern, which is nice. I like it. I think I'm just going to do the the band solid black. So let's see if this black marker will look decent just so you don't have to watch me color it all in no nope, that one's dying I would keep the uh, I would do it with the pen but it's just gonna be so time-consuming so you can see the inks are different colors Got a base on, and we'll go from there. And we can always tie this back into our drawing if it drives us nuts being a different color. But now I can take my pen and just go over it real quick. So the texture of the pen is still incorporated. Now if I was drawing this just me, I would have done the whole thing in the pen. I just don't want to spend 10 hours of your time <laughs> watching me color in a big black circle <laughs> or oval. marker also kind of gives it a felt feel too. Like it is a felt hat. So in this instant I'm not worried about the direction of my pen because it's really just I just want to add this color back into the sketch. I wish we had done a little bit of movement in this band and I think I would have liked it better but that's all right so if the difference drives you nuts what you can do is you can just add this into a few spots so it ties it together the color palette and doesn't drive you bonkers I'll we'll throw some in here and maybe a couple in his stripes here just so that that texture and that color of this pen is incorporated throughout the whole drawing because it's something that would bother me for sure Okay, so that color gets back in there. And then I think we will just do the top of the hat. Should we do something different at the top of the hat? What do we want to do? I think we'll do solid black. Yeah, I feel as though if we had done some detail in here, it would look a little nicer, a little bit more realistic. So maybe we'll change what's, maybe we'll make those stripes a little wider. So 
So whenever I color something in, I usually color just that shape at a time. So I'll draw this shape and color it in, and then I'll color that shape in separately. I think it's a good habit to get into, as opposed to when you're a kid, you're just, you're just coloring all over. <laughs> and again, with my contour line, I do want to create a little bit of curve, even though it's going pretty dark. Again, we'll introduce the pen. I don't know how long this video's been already, but... It sure is fun drawing with you, and I hope you stuck around. I hope you like it. Give me a thumbs up if you did, and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. Um, and please feel free to leave a comment on what it is you would like to see. I'm more than happy to try my best to accommodate. Uh, it's your, it's, you know, it's, you guys are watching, so I like to make sure I do stuff that you guys want to see. So leave me a comment, I'd love to hear it. I don't always get back to people right away. Um, this is part-time for me, YouTube, so I do have a full-time job, so it's kind of a hobby. So I do my best. I'm just going to widen these lines a little bit. I'm not sure I like the bandana now. Still, it will do. It will do for now. And there we go. I think I'll do more on the bow tie with this pen. Really darken it up. just finish a few of these stripes down this way and that will be it again you can go back to the skull and really play with more detail if you want really have fun with it then you could be wearing say a black shirt under here and I like to leave just a little bit of white highlight around the bottom of that bow just to help visually separate the, the shirt from the from the um, bow tie. All right, there we go. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, subscribe and I'll we'll see you again soon, guys. All right, take care. Bye.